In this episode of the Effective E-Commerce Podcast, we're going to be talking about drop shipping versus white labeling versus creating your own product. Now, before I uh, go any farther, I do want to say that I actually am re-recording this just for YouTube. I messed up and I forgot to record the video for the um, podcast I did. And you can actually watch the mess up live. I did a, a live YouTube stream. I'm, in, I'm doing a U live YouTube stream every Wednesday at 5 PST, 8 EST. So you, if you wanted to, you could have saw my mess up live. So I'm re-recording this just for YouTube. So if I leave anything out, uh, please let me know. Please leave it in the comments down below. But you can see the full original podcast episode, or you can listen to it at least, by going to iTunes, looking for the Effective E-Commerce Podcast. So if you're into podcasts, definitely check that out. But let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about here is what is the difference between drop shipping, white labeling, and creating your own product? I think it's important to define the different terms. There's drop shipping, which basically you act as a middleman. Customers buy stuff from you, and then you turn around and tell the manufacturer where to ship it. So an example of this might be you are the Kayak King, and you have a website, kayakking.com, and you help pair people with certain kayaks. So someone might come to your website, buy a $500 kayak, then you go around and you pay $400 to some manufacturer, let's say, uh, you know, rugged outdoors kayaks, you give them 400 bucks and they ship it for you. So there's a lot of benefits for this. And we'll talk about the benefits in just a second. The next thing we'll talk about is white labeling and define that white labeling is basically just taking a product that already exists. Nine times out of 10, this is going to Alibaba or going to some kind of Chinese manufacturer and just sticking your logo on it and making it your own product. Even though there's nothing special about it, there's nothing that makes it your own thing. That company can turn around and white label it to as many companies as possible, meaning you'll have as much competition as they want, really. Uh, an example of this would be you go to a Chinese manufacturer who produces like handheld fans and you stick your logo on it and maybe it's Cool Breeze fans and you're just, you know, you're whatever, you're fanning yourself um, with that. And that's a white labeling a product. So the good thing about that is it's a little bit easier than creating your own product from scratch. But the downside is anybody can do it. It's not that hard. Another downside is you do have to pay for inventory. So drop shipping is a little bit better because you don't have to pay for inventory in that regard, um, but with all of these, one of the issues you run across is the easier it is, the easier it is for a competitor to come in and steal your lunch because it would suck if you're the kayak king. And let's just say hypothetically, you have the website kayakking.com, you put up a bunch of products and there's nothing special about your website. Someone else can do that tomorrow. Now, what might be special about your website is maybe you have really good SEO, really good paid ads. Maybe you have a bunch of YouTube videos or really good content explaining what kayaks are best for what kind of situations. So you need some kind of a competitive advantage. Same thing holds true with white labeling. Now, creating your own product is pretty self-explanatory. But that's creating a product from scratch. And I recommend this if you're serious. If you're serious about e-commerce, creating your own product from scratch is the, your best bet. Um, if you're just dipping your toes in, drop shipping is pretty good. It's, it, I think drop shipping is really good for learning. It's not good for all situations, but I think drop shipping is good for learning. And I did do a video on why drop shipping is a waste of time. And I still stand by that. I think a lot of for most people, drop shipping is a waste of time. A lot of gurus out there, a lot of internet marketers try to make it sound like drop shipping is the easiest money in the world. It's not the case. Uh, most of the people that are making money on drop shipping are spending a lot of money on advertising. So keep that in mind when you're trying to start a shiny new drop shipping website. The, the next thing I'll say is creating your own product makes for a really big moat. You're castle your brand your company is your castle and you don't want competitors to come and break in so the harder it is to create a company the bigger the moat around your castle the higher the walls are the the bigger the wall but the better the defense is so if it's really easy to do like drop shipping drop shipping is very easy to start now the hard part obviously as i mentioned is uh creating some kind of a brand creating a reason why people would want to come to you that that creates a little bit more of a moat but for for long-term success, I mean, any big company you can think of, they have their own branded product. I also think drop shipping is dying as Amazon becomes more popular, unless it's B2B. So what you can think about for yourself is, um, is this 
something that people would go to Amazon for? And if the answer is no, then maybe a drop shipping website makes sense. If it's business to business, a lot of business stuff, a lot of times business people won't buy from Amazon because their higher end items aren't available on Amazon. What I mean by higher price tag items, things that a lot of consumers aren't going to get. It's also good if your product needs, if there's a lot of options in your demographic and there needs to be some kind of a, um, explanation on which thing's the right. So the Kayak King is a perfect example because not every kayak's right for every situation. And maybe you would explain what's the difference between an ocean kayak and a river kayak. I don't know if that's even a thing, but that's an example. So uh, I will, I'll probably stop here and we'll, I'll, I'll link at this point the actual video, but that's some of the good things about drop shipping. And the rest of this video, we're going to talk about white labeling and creating your own product and go in depth more. But the rest of the video I recorded before, so I might be leaving out some stuff. Once again, if you want to make sure you don't lose anything, you can go to the Effective E-Commerce podcast on iTunes. So thank you for watching this far and let's watch the rest of the video. Doing business to business sales with drop shipping can make a lot of sense. And I think the reason is there's this question when you're a business and trying to buy business related goods, where do I go to buy a product? And Amazon's not usually the answer. So by having a drop shipping site, you act as that middleman, which is a needed service. I also think drop shipping websites could make sense if you're trying to be the expert or you're trying to build a brand on, I want to be the kayak king. I know everything about kayaking. I have a YouTube channel where I teach people how to kayak. I am just, I love kayaking. And if you want to do something like that, that makes a lot more sense than just having a website where you are a middleman and you don't really add any value. So if you're going to be doing a drop shipping website, you need to think to yourself, how am I going to be adding value to the world? And if your only added value is that you're connecting people, eventually, in my opinion, the manufacturers will come out with their own websites or they'll start selling on Amazon. Like I have a lot of followers actually on Effective E-Commerce that want to start drop shipping sites. And I'd say about 90% of them, their business model does not make sense. For instance, a lot of of them are t-shirts. I think I'll use that as an example. A lot of them are t-shirts. Well, if I'm going to buy a t-shirt, there's so many places to go. What makes your site special? Why would I want to go to your site? And I'm not saying it's impossible. There's people that make a lot of money selling drop shipping t-shirts, but also with certain products, what's going to stop the manufacturer from doing it themselves? So let's say you're drop shipping uh, drones, for instance, and what's stopping the manufacturer from selling it on Amazon or their own website cheaper than you can possibly sell it for? The answer is probably nothing. So that's one of the big downsides. And in life, I think the easier something is, the more competitors you're gonna have, the less advantageous it is in the long run. So what I mean by this, creating your own product is very hard. It's very labor intensive. You're building a moat around your castle. You have this, you know, you're building up all your defenses where if it's really easy to get into it, it's gonna be really easy for someone else to get into it, which means you're not that special and your website's not that special. So I think that's something very important to keep in mind. I don't recommend drop shipping for most people. And the reason is I don't think it's a long-term asset. Now, if you're just, you're new to this, you don't have a lot of money and you want to just jump in really quickly. Sure. Go ahead and do it. But if you have a little bit of money saved up, I highly recommend white labeling or creating your own product even more specifically. Uh, there's just, there's a ton of downsides with drop shipping. Also, a lot of the gurus out there that talk about how easy drop shipping is, it's because they're spending a lot of money on ads. It's not that they're Everyone touts it as this way of making money without having to spend any money Um, because obviously most creating your own product can cost a lot of money, but the truth is very different. It usually takes a lot of money. They're spending money on AdWords. They're spending money on product listing ads. They're spending money on Facebook ads. They're spending money on traffic to come to their website. So that's something to keep in mind. Even though it might seem really shiny at first, drop shipping is this holy grail of making money online. It's not necessarily that. I have a whole video on why I think dropshipping is a waste of time, so I won't belabor this point right now, but I think it's good for starting, bad for the long term. White labeling. So this makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, for Amazon. That's about it. I mean, maybe it makes sense uh, getting people to your website. Maybe you find some kind of weird widget that no one knows exists. Maybe it's a really cool vegetable peeler that has some kind of a function that other vegetable peelers don't have. It already exists, but for whatever reason, it's not big in America and you think that it could be really big. Then it might make sense. Like I said, also, it's good for Amazon. One of the benefits of this is you don't need to go through 
all the work of creating your own product. Of course, as I stated earlier, the negative is it's very easy for someone to knock you off. My friend that sold the handheld fans, that's exactly what happened to him. Someone came and just knocked him off. Now, true white labeling means you have your brand on there and it makes that gives you a little bit more of a moat because you're, you know, whatever, let's say pure bliss handheld fans and on Amazon, you'd have your own category or your own product page, I should say. That is beneficial. That is a little bit more of a moat. But once again, white labeling isn't that special. It's not, it's not my preferred method. Now, what I do prefer personally is creating your own product. But the big downside I want to start off saying right off the bat is it's expensive. It's not cheap to start your own product. Now, you can do it for cheaper. For instance, Performance Nut Butter, I probably could have done it for 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I probably could have whipped up a batch in my kitchen, sold it at a farmer's market, made $200, and then go, maybe not a farmer's market because that costs money to get in, but sell it to friends and family, make that $200, spend that, take that $200, make uh, $400 worth of nut butter, sell the nut butter, you know, back and forth. I wanted to cut through the BS. I wanted to personally, I put down a decent chunk of change, probably five to $10,000 on the Kickstarter, but that included things like sending out samples to influencers, sending, uh, creating a video, which cost me 3,600 bucks right there. But the reason that creating your own product is so great, in my opinion, why I think most people should do it. If you're thinking about starting an e-commerce store, why I think this is the method that you should do is because you're creating something really special. You're adding a lot of value to the world. You're doing something that's going to be hard for your competitors to knock you off. And trust me, creating your own product is hard. I've spent the last six months plus, maybe the last year uh, in my spare time, mostly working on performance nut butter. So by having this product, having your own product, you have this really big moat with these huge castle walls and there's nothing stopping someone from creating their own off brand of performance nut butter. It's not that special. I mean, even more special would be getting a patent, et cetera, but that's probably beyond the scope of this podcast. Cause I don't know a lot about how to do that, but by having your own product, you're, you're able to create some kind of a tribe around you as well. Now you can do this with drop shipping. You can do this with white labeling. You can create a tribe, but when it's something brand new, it's a lot easier to get followers. It's a lot easier to get people to, to like your company, to be diehard fans of your company. I have quite a number of people with performance nut butter that love my company. One of my favorite stories is uh, a guy actually approached me and he wanted to buy temporary tattoos with my logo to put on his shoulder during a mud race, uh, like a like a Spartan race type thing or mud um, obstacle running type race. And I told him, you know, I don't really have the budget for that right now. He ended up buying the stickers anyways and putting them on his arm. He felt so invested in the company, so invested in the brand. Now, there's no way that would have happened if I was just a white label or a drop shipping company. I mean, I guess it's possible. If I was the Kayak King and I had a huge army around me, it's possible that he would have been like, wow, the Kayak King's super amazing. But once again, your moat's not that big. There's not a lot stopping someone else from coming in and being the Kayak King. So creating your product, we'll do more episodes on how to actually create your own product later. But this is the method. If you're starting an online store, this is by far the method I recommend doing. So with that being said, I want to announce if you are trying to start an online store, I have a course coming out. I'm going to actually be launching it. I'm going to be doing it every few months, but I'm going to be launching the first one. Uh, It's an online store A to Z course. And basically what that means is I'm going to take a group of probably around 10 entrepreneurs and it's going to be very, you know, small group of us from just an idea all the way to a finished store in five weeks. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to get traffic. I'm going to show you how to actually build the website. I'm going to do a lot of really great stuff with you. You can go to effectiveecommerce.com slash AZ to get more information on that. The other thing you can do is if you go to Effective E-Commerce, you can get my uh, success pack. And in my success pack, I have a ton of great information, including a checklist for starting your online business, which I've gotten a lot of good feedback about. I probably have a hundred things on that, things you never would have thought of. Things like, I mean, a very simple thing is adding Google Analytics from day one, adding that little tracking code. It's very easy to do and it provides a ton of insight. Adding the Facebook pixel from day one. Uh, making sure your site's all SEO'd, all that kind of stuff. You can get that at effectiveecommerce.com. Poke around, you will find it right there. Also, if you are looking to sign up for Shopify or Big Commerce or WooCommerce, I have links to all of those. Like I said at the beginning, I recommend Shopify. If you go to effectiveecommerce.com/shopify, that's all lowercase. So effectiveecommerce.com/shopify, and use that link to sign up for Shopify, I will give you a free 
one-on-one -on -one consulting session, help you get it set up. And there's no strings attached. I'm not trying to upsell you. I don't really, I, I do do some si some consulting on the side, but that's not how I make most of my money, nor do I care to. Uh, that 30 minute consulting session is just there to help you get started. And as a thank you, because when you sign up for Shopify using my link, I get a little bit of a credit. So I want to give you a thank you. I want to give you an incentive for doing that. Another way, if you want to get a free one-on-one -on -one consulting session with me is go to iTunes, leave a five-star review for iTunes. And every month, literally every month, I'm going to be picking a new person to do a one-on-one -on -one consulting session with. I really do enjoy doing the one-on-one -on -one consulting session. So I'm trying to give ways uh, to get those for free. So leave a five-star review on iTunes. It means a lot. It helps. The more reviews we get, the better guests later on that we're going to get. The first 45 episodes or so are going to be an e-commerce course, like a complete audio course. But eventually, I would like to have guests on the show. And the more reviews we have, the higher quality, the higher caliber of guests I'm going to be able to get on. So leave that five-star review on iTunes. And there's probably more. There's there's so many fun updates I can do, but I will leave it at that. I'm gonna have new podcast episodes, at least for the time being, every Monday and Thursday. And if you have any questions, reach out, Travis at effectiveecommerce.com. Thank you so much for listening to this episode.